Scott Carter, the Emmy-nominated executive producer of HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher, a playwright, a, his uh, most recent play, The Gospel, according to Thomas Jefferson, Charles Dickens, and Leo Tolstoy, Discord, you'll recall, a couple of weeks ago, I, I was talking about this at some length on this program because I went to New York to be there for, for one of the performances, and, and Scott and I uh, had a conversation about it on stage. It's basically, well, I shouldn't be telling you the story. Scott should. Scott, welcome well, and, to the program. And also, you had seen it in Washington before yes. that. Yes. So you've seen two different casts. Um, <clears throat> this all comes out of, just for some context, this all, I'm, I grew up as someone who was not interested in religion, or I was indifferent or even hostile to it. And then I've been a lifelong asthmatic and had a near-death experience in 1987. And I was in the hospital for a week, and coming out of it, I had this kind of epiphany, this bliss experience that lasted for about a week, after which I was completely convinced of a God, which I have not doubted since that moment. This is in June of 1987. Oh. But I had no clear, I, I had no definite religion to return to, so I just kind of opened myself up to everything. So for the last 30 years, I have, anytime somebody wants to, for me to read something, I will try to read it. I have gone to so many different ceremonies. I, um, for two years in New York, I had a Jehovah's Witness come to my apartment every Wednesday afternoon at 1 o'clock. He would talk to me for an hour. I'd give him a glass of water. He'd talk to me for an hour. And at the end of the hour, I would say, once again, I believe nothing that you believe, and I will see you next week. <laughs> and, um, it. and, and, and it's just been this way of, of um, exploring things to find out what I agree or disagree with. Mm -hmm. And over a period of time, I, uh, my sense of religion has deepened, and w my, my respect for those with um, deep convictions uh, is, 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 is very high. And my, but also my, um, my feeling about those who I perceive to be hypocrites as that's gotten more severe. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's worked on both sides that's, of the scale. The play uh, comes out of this period of time where I, where I found out for the first time through this, this show that Bill Moyers did on PBS called World of Ideas that Thomas Jefferson had created his own Bible over three nights while in the White House. He gets done with the day's activity, and at night, he and Meriwether Lewis and a couple other people are living in the White House by themselves. And um, he takes the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He has two identical Bibles because he's going to need both sides of the page. And he takes a razor, and he cuts out all the, all the verses that he likes, leaves all the ones that he doesn't, and then fashions out of a blank notebook. He pastes the verses he likes in, in an original narrative, and so he forms his own Bible. And I thought this was a tremendously exciting idea, and perhaps there might be a play in it. And then later I found out that Charles Dickens had also written his own gospel. His was written for his children. And then Leo Tolstoy had developed his own gospel as a way of staving off suicide uh, because he had become, <clears throat> after, pardon me, after his success as a novelist with War and Peace and Anna Karenina, he saw them, he saw fiction to be worthless. He saw all of his riches having no meaning whatsoever, and um, he went out in his fields and started working with his peasants. And so he realized that the peasants never thought about suicide. They thought suicide was the greatest sin that anybody could commit. And so he thought, if I could just have the faith of my peasants, I would be saved from suicide. So he started going to their chapel, but he hated it because the catechism, the Russian catechism and the way the Russian Orthodox Church was, origin was organized in those days, made it just a tool of the state. So for the next two years, he studies, he already knows Latin. For the next two years, he studies Greek so he can go back to the original scriptures. And then he writes his own gospels also. So my play has these three distinguished people in a limbo or bardo, to use George Saunders' word, a bardo-like setting where each of them thinks their path to salvation depends upon convincing the other two that their theology is inferior. It's a remarkable play. It so, really is. And the, the, the question for the hour, and, and Scott is with us for the hours, and, and uh, Arthur is opening the phone lines. Uh, number <laughs> one, uh, what is, how, it, how it has the role of religion changed since the founding of the country? And, and what I would encourage people, if they, if they want to call and discuss this with Scott and, and me, uh, you know, what, what, do you see religion as a benign force, as as a positive force, as a negative force, um, through the arc of history, and 
at this moment how religion is being used? And let me put that question to you first. Well, I would say one of the one of the main things that's different between now and Jefferson's time, Jefferson, after his letter to the Danbury priests mm -hmm. and getting into trouble for the uh, the the phrase that is that now a lot of people think is in the Constitution or the Declaration, but it's not the uh, wall of separation between church and state. He was able to avoid publicly talking about religion for the rest of his life, and he lives another quarter century. He's able to run for office in 1800 and run for re-election in 1804 and really avoid the topic. And he, he became even more... And, and you, uh, we have bonded because you are such a Jefferson fan, and I feel like you know at least as much as I do, if not much more, so that if I stray from, from accuracy, you will be the first to correct me. Um, but I feel like he then became even more jealously guarding of his private religious beliefs, sharing them only with John Adams at one point, with Benjamin Rush, with, with a few other people who he could completely trust not to leak his views to the public because he thought that his views as, as essentially a deist, someone who did not believe in the miracles of Jesus, though he regarded him to be the supreme philosopher, that the populace at large would find it difficult to vote for him if they knew his true ideas. Right. And, 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 and the, the famous, I think it was to Ben Rush, the, the letter where he, he talked about, you know, I've sworn, uh, you know, uh, eternal, eternal hostility. hostility. Yeah. Yes. And it turns out he was talking about the churches. And at the end of the letter, he says, you know, please, please keep this discreet. Please don't share this with, you know, the genus irritable vatum, you know. Is, right. They're, 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 the stand is all too interesting. I guess, yeah, and he, and he, and during the election of 1800, his enemies used the charges that he was a heretic mm -hmm. uh, against him, and priests actually from the pulpits uh, told their parishioners that he would confiscate all Bibles would he, uh, if he were to be elected. Um one of the things that people often don't know is the um, number of established religions in the different colonies during Jefferson's time. So let's say in Connecticut, you might be p paying taxes uh, to the Congregationalist Church, whether or not you were a Congregationalist or a Catholic or a Jew or a Muslim or, or an atheist. And uh, it was the Anglican Church in Virginia. Very often, the, all the different colonies, many of them, had official religions. And very often, if you didn't belong to the official religion, you couldn't run for office. Uh, and and this is big in Massachusetts. Huge. I mean, this, this, they almost so, didn't become a state because of this. Right. And so Jefferson and Madison overturning that in Virginia, which is one of the uh, three achievements on Jefferson's gravestone, the uh, revised statute for religious freedom in the state of yeah. Virginia. He was so proud of that because then it set a precedent by which other colonies overturned their established churches. So, of course, he was the enemy. Right. Of all priests and 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 clergy throughout the the young country, because they saw him as an enemy to their power. 